Get to class. Hey, hey, get to class. Class, get, get, get to class. Get, get to class. Get, 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 get. Sit down. No, I don't want any apples. Get in there. The bell's gonna ring. You're gonna be late. Tardy. I don't think this counts as anything bad, right? This is this is all fine. Get off the table. What are you doing? Get off the table. Get off the table. Get off the table. Why is this why would this be acceptable? Why? Ah. Come on. I said get off the table. It's... You deserve this. Detention. In the form of death. And by death I mean detention. Oh, um, well, sorry, you had to witness that. Um, I'm just going to go retreat down here into my um, special secret place. And, hey, while we're, while we're down here, let's, let's take a moment and talk about chemistry. Um, how about the periodic table? That's a good thing to talk about here. Here I have a periodic table. Just happen to have one here in this extremely, extremely um, fire... I don't know, hazardous room, that's a good word to say. Um, yeah, so don't don't touch anything, it'll burst into flames. And um, let's start off with all the pretty colors. So I have my periodic table here is broken down into the different groups of elements, different types of elements. They are as follows. You have the alkaline metals, the alkaline earth metals, the transition metals, the basic metals, sometimes called other metals, the semi-metals, sometimes called metalloids, the nonmetals, the halogens, the noble gases, the lanthanides, and the actinides. And um, so you can kind of see them there as you go with the red and all that stuff over there. And it sort of flows into here with your stair steps and the nonmetals again there, halogens there. You have your semi metals there, basic metals, noble gases, I think I skipped those. You got the transition metals here. You have the alkaline with an N here, and then alkali metals here, and then. Um, fun fact, the lanthanides and actinides are names um, such because they follow the lanthanum and uh, actinum. So that's that's why they're a special name there. Um, what else can we talk about the periodic table for? Uh, well, let's talk about the valence electron. That's an easy one. If we take a moment here and ignore all of the yellow stuff in here, my... Um, the, the columns of my periodic table actually tell me some really cool things, specifically how many valence electrons. Now, valence meaning the outermost um, shell, uh, so the electrons on the outside. So everything in this first column here, again, ignoring the, the transition metals here, the yellow, all of these, all these red ones and then hydrogen, all have one valence electron because they are all in the first column column. Let's go to the second column. You'll find that these all have two valence electrons. Again, we skip here and go to the third column here. Boron, being the third one, has three valence electrons. All of these have three. And then four. And then five valence, six valence, seven valence, and eight valence. And it turns out eight is a pretty nice number because it's what they want to have. You might know that noble gases don't react with any other element. That's because reaction in chemistry is all about that sharing electron. And it turns out that um, elements want to have eight electrons in their valence rule. It's called the octet rule, and they want eight. So the ones that already have eight, i.e. the noble gases, they don't interact with anything because they don't want anything from anybody else. Now, a slight um, technicality, helium, technically, um, it, it, you can kind of think of it as being right here. Now, helium belongs over here because in the first shell, there are only two electrons. So, it goes over here as sort of like the full, like this is full over here. And and not here. But if you want to think of helium as sitting kind of right here next to hydrogen and having two uh, valence, then that's okay. It'll it'll work for other things as well. So, and if you were wondering how I knew the number of electrons in the first uh, orbital of the first shell, well, 
I don't memorize that stuff. All I do is count. And so let's count the first column. I'm sorry, the first row of electrons. And same thing, let's count the first row of my periodic table. So those two things are going to be the same thing. So one, two elements. Look at that. Two elements. That means there are two electrons in the first shell. Let's go to the second row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, look at that. It's the eight. And so the second shell has eight electrons, as does the, uh, the third. And so that's why helium you know, belongs over there because there's only two, but at the same time it belongs over here because it's full of the shell. Now there are also blocks we can talk about. So the first one, let's talk about the S block. Now the S block is everything, it's hydrogen again and helium. Helium is part of the S block, which is why I have this sort of fake helium sign here to show you. It's kind of a placeholder. All of this stuff here, so all the red, all the orange, and then helium and hydrogen, these all make up the S block. All right, the, uh, the D block in the middle is just everything that's yellow. That's pretty, all the transition metals make up the D block. That's pretty easy. The P block makes up this whole rectangle over here, and it's everything on this side except for helium, because helium is over there in the S block. So this square right here, all of that is part of the P block. And then way down here, we have the F block. And that's all your lanthanides and actinides. They all act in, or they all fall into that block. Now, you might have memorized how many electrons go in each type of orbital. Orbital, an S orbital, a P orbital, a D orbital, or an F orbital. Uh, if you have not, then all you really need to do is remember how to count. That's the first thing. Remember how to count. And then remember um, what to count. And that's only the two things that's you got to do. Just how to count and what to count. So let's talk about the S orbital. Let's look at the S block. Let's count how many electrons are in the S block. So, or how many columns, I should say. So I got one and I got two. Hmm. So there are two columns and there are two electrons in the S orbital. That's, that's, that's really it. That's, that's, that is it. That is all that I have to say about that. Now the P1, same thing. P orbital has six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, look at that. It holds six. So six columns in the P orbital because the P orbitals can hold a maximum of six electrons. The D orbitals, it's the yellow stuff here. You might know. If not, let's count and find out. It holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. There are ten electrons in the D orbital. Ten um, elements in there. Uh, ten columns, I should say, in the D block. It's the same thing. Uh, down here with the F block, same thing. There are 14 electrons that can be held in the F orbitals, and I have 14 columns in my lanthanides and actinides. And I can I can feel you distrusting me, so let's go ahead and count them. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. I have not lied intentionally today. So that is my periodic table. And if you recall as well, the off ball principle, of course, this all may sound like words you've never heard before, in which case um, you'll want to check out a video on electron configuration. And that'll make a bit more sense. But the off ball principle can be read directly from the periodic table. Now, most of you know um, the 1s, 2s, 2p, and then you have to draw those diagonal lines. I can actually read it from this diagram left to right. But the first thing I have to do is I have to count stair steps in order for this to work. So we start, let's say I start here. That's one. And I step down two, then down three, and down four. Imagine if I were actually standing here. And this is the first step I jump onto, and then this is the second step I jump onto, and then down to the third, and then oh, down here to the fourth. And that's the order that I stair step down. I can do it on either side, you know, if I'm there first. So for one, and then I come to the orange for two, and then to the D block for three, 
and then um, to the lanthanides I can't fit in there but um, or the F block for four one two three four one two three four now let's let's recall that so the off ball principle can be read um, starting from the top left is reading left to right the periodic table so what you're going to read is we're going to read the uh, rows the rows sorry sometimes called periods and we're going to read the blocks and that's really it so the first one is 1s so we start with the one column and we start with the oh look this is the first one we can encounter the s so 1s goes right here just remember helium as far as the s block fits right in here so there's nothing else on the first one and so the next one I go to is going to be up two because I'm on the second one. So two s. Okay, so two s. It's easy enough. The next bus I come into, or the next orbital, is going to be two because we're still on that row. And this is the p block now. So two p. All right. And so the next one in line is going to be three s down here, and then and look at that three p, and then it just goes all the way down. And so we got four s. Ah, but here is why I made you count. So before or after 4s, we do not go to 4d. This is not this is a trick. The reason we counted 1, 2, 3, 4 is to remember where they start at. So this actually starts at 3. I know, I know it's the fourth row, but it, it starts at 3. And it just does. Don't, it, it just does. A good way to remember this is remember like 3D movies, 3D goggles, 3D something. It's it's 3D. And so after my 3P comes here, turns out that 4S has less energy than 3D, which is why the 4 comes before the last 3. But um, So after 4S comes this one, but it starts at 3, so this would be 3D. And then we go back to the normal one, so then we have 4p, and then we go down to 5s, and then this would be 4, because it goes back down. So 4p would be here, and then um, back to 5, 5p, and then, and then so on and so forth. It sort of just carries all the way on through, with the f blocks jumping in um, right around there. That's where they split off of. So this is the periodic table, and I hope that this has helped you sort of get to know it. The periodic table is one of these, uh, one of the crowning achievements, I would say, of uh, chemistry. It's incredible, and it's just weird how organized it is. Um, one more thing I'll leave you with is that it's set up to be more intense as you go down. And so a prime example is um, lithium. Turns out lithium and water will react. It sort of is kind of explosive, they'll catch on fire, this will be some heat, some fizzles, um, but it, it, it happens. Now, sodium reacts more with water. Whatever lithium does, sodium does it more. Potassium does it more. Uh, rubidium does it much more. Cesium, we start to getting you know pretty, pretty violence. And um, francium, we actually don't really have enough of this to do any sort of test, but it would be crazy. I mean, well, I don't have an idea. Try just like setting off a bomb, you know, drop a little bit of francium into the ocean and you get a bomb going off. It's that violent of a reaction with energy being released. So as things go down, they um, tend to get more more extreme in their related, uh, relationships with each other. So anyway, that is where I will leave you. I hope this helps and you have a great, fantastic day. And I forgot how to pause the video.